Sun will make its move in your ascendant on 15th of May and for a month Sun in its annual transit in Taurus will be on your ascendant along with Mercury this time and this is the time when Sun has crossed the Aries zodiac sign crossed Rahu Rahu is at the 28 degree around so Sun is initially influenced by Rahu's energy too much so even in Taurus it will take a week or 10 days for you to settle down on your confidence level you will slowly start having faith and believe in yourself and you will slowly start becoming comfortable with your own identity with your own self with your own space but you must give some time a retrograde mercury is also responsible for confusing thoughts so you will have to wait till mercury becomes direct on the other hand the dispositor of sun that means the ruler of taurus which is venus initially will be along with jupiter in the sign of pisces which is approximately on 15th of may but soon venus will enter aries zodiac sign and that is when the game begins see for taurus ascendant and moon sign sun rules fourth house and fourth lord going into the first house means your connection with your assets properties family joint family your car your vehicles the land that you own even the gadgets that you have all are fourth house something that makes you more and more comfortable something that is related to lifestyle something that is that you have and you can actually sell out to give you more some return that is the fourth house for you also fourth house represent your comfort zone your mother night time your behavior in the night all this is fourth house and when this lord goes in the first house and if anything happens to venus remember if anything happens to venus your arrangement with these areas of life will be disturbed and that is exactly what will happen when venus will go in the sign of aries because venus is in the sign of aries it will be affected by rahu and the more sun moves towards the edge of the taurus the other edge that means towards 30 degree venus will fast move towards rahu and venus will try to catch up with rahu and that is when the doubt in relationship can happen there can be a strained ego fight between you and your mother or your mother in law there can be some emotional drama at home so be careful on that front especially if you are planning to travel abroad if you are planning to leave your country then you may have to convince your your family a lot this is the time when your expenses can increase multifold because you might think that you are investing in assets that will give you return but this sun is heavily influenced by rahu and venus energy in the 12th house therefore it will create a belief that more you spend the more you get so you will end up spending for your clothes for your personality for your gadgets see it's not wrong in spending anything but if you don't use the objects that you buy with your money then that's a waste of money and that is where you should be very very careful jupiter in the 11th house is going to give you money but on the other hand venus rahu in the 12th house influences the sun which influences the 4th house which means unnecessary expenses shopping will make you more and more comfortable but you won't get anything out of it so whatever jupiter will give you you will end up giving it back so a part of your wealth should be donated for the welfare of female girl child education female child education or just general female welfare you can also donate the that part of the wealth that you earn in this period to old age homes helping that sector sector of society will create a justification of expense and you should lock your funds for a like 60% of your income or accordingly i'm just figuring a number a random number but according to you the savings that you are supposed to do just lock it and when you will lock that you will realize that the remaining can be divided into two parts one for donation the other for expense and even if you spend everything you still have that savings left for you which is locked 
So this is the time to lock your money into buying some assets, buying a land, buying a property or buying or, or putting your money into fixed instruments like fixed deposits or whatever be in your country. A comfortable deposit, nothing risk because if you take risk, it's again a chance of there's a chance of losing money. Stock trading is risky at this time. You should be very, very careful. Overall, sun transit in the sign of Taurus is actually very good if you play it intelligently. If you play it smartly, it is going to enlighten your home, enlighten your first house. Install new lights at home, at least change one defective bulb or one bulb or light in your home or bring a new light and try to use that light often for this one month so that the light comes in your home. Try to ensure that the sunlight enters your house as much as possible and try to ensure that you see morning sunlight, do some yoga, pranayam, healing activity early in the morning. Try to avoid taking tamasic things in the night like alcohol or very spicy food because Venus and Rahu is in the 12th house, it is on your sleep, subconscious mind. When you are trying to sleep, only see, listen to positive music, positive vibrations, some chanting, but don't watch anything negative. Don't sleep while you are playing some negative YouTube video or something that has a negative message, a horror message or something that you don't like because then it will train your subconscious mind. It will create problems in your life. And the only way you will be able to solve that problem is by throwing money. So don't put yourself into such situation. Overall, this is a good time. Otherwise, if your Taurus ascendant Mercury, which is your second Lord is in first house. So wealth will come. Consumption should be controlled. Minimalistic lifestyle is must for Taurus in this particular transit. Areas where it will impact you the most is your home, and personal life front on a broader scale. With respect to marriage, you should be very, very careful not to display any ego. There will be some extra expenses, but you should try to only control it. You cannot suppress, but you need to regulate. Chant Aditya Hrde Stotra every day. Get up early in the morning. Chant Gayatri Mantra. Suri Gayatri is going to be very helpful in this time frame. And a bit of pranayama and a bit of meditation in the morning. And positive affirmations and vibrations in the night is enough to give you the necessary confidence and control the solar energy. Virgo Ascendant In your case, Sun rules 12th house. Usually, Sun don't perform well in the 12th house. But when it is the ruler of the 12th house, and it goes in the ninth house, this will favor all the foreign transaction. So people who are involved into trade of goods and services, people who are involved into travel and tourism and hotel industry will see a good boost in this time frame. Twelfth Lord coming in the ninth house also means that even the remotest of the possibility of growth, success and happiness will be coming in your life if you are following the path of dharma. That means if you are trying to correct things, this is the transit of correction. This is the transit to learn from the past mistakes and to correct your mistakes and take proactive action. And if you do that, sun will ensure that your efforts are right. Sun will guide you to the path of light and you will see that the sun and mercury combination is going to bring some real good effect. But if anything that you do out of ego, then you will meet with a bad fate. Remember, your ascendant is ruled by Buddha and this Buddha is combust and is coming very close in front of the Surya. So you should be very, very careful with your health, with your karma, with what you speak, with what you deliver, how you treat your reputation, how you see your image in society. And if you are a Virgo ascendant and if your Ardha Lagna falls in the sign of Taurus, then for you the image becomes more and more important. So you must be humble, you must be respectful, especially towards your in-laws and towards your parents and your spouse. Relations basically, close relations. Sun moving in the ninth house also means come, a guru will guide you, a spiritual force will guide you. There is a divine hand behind you to support you. 
So you should be ready to accept it. The only problem here is Venus transit in the sign of Aries. When Venus moves into Aries, because it is the 8th house, this can increase lust. This can inflammate tamasic desire. So you should be very, very careful. I will upload a video on Venus transit in the sign of Aries. So please subscribe so that you get notified when I upload that video. But overall, because 8th house will see Venus and 12th house comes in the 9th house, this, this lust that is created, this strange desire, might make you believe that achieving that desire is your dharma. That's called confusion of dharma. Wrong following. So be very careful who is your guru. What kind of dharma? Dharma is not religion. Dharma is path of life, way of life. What kind of way of life you are trying to follow? Therefore, the consequence of your action and knowledge of that consequence is very important. Sun in the ninth house, if it believes, it's like a king who will believe that killing the other king is his dharma. Then it becomes violent. Then it doesn't comply with the rule of nature, law of nature, and that can create consequences. So when you are trying to do something, don't do it with emotion. Do it with a lot of practicality, humbleness. And you have to see the broader and the overall picture. Don't just see through a pinhole camera. Don't have a pinhole point of view. But rather have a holistic view of any decision that you make. And then you will not be wrong. And then you will also see good things at the end of the tunnel. Ketu is in second house. And therefore, financial insecurity will be a bigger thing in this time. Venus rules your ninth and second house and when Venus goes in the eighth house along with the sun transit, this can increase expenses. You will end up buying more insurance than needed or you may end up paying more tax because of your mistakes. So be careful on that area. There can be war due to inheritance, land, property, assets and there can be a fight between parents and son and daughters family members, be careful on that angle. Overall, if you are following the right path, if you are chanting Aditya Hrdes Totra, chant a Vishnu Sastra Naam and always look at a bigger picture and consequences before that, before you take a step, you will find that you are absolutely in the right path and there is no need to worry. It's a very positive transit for you. Capricorn Ascendant, Sun moves in your 5th house and Sun rules your 8th house. So whenever this 8th Lord moves around your zodiac signs, around different bhavas in your horoscope, it brings the uncertainty in that house. So when Sun, which is the 8th Lord, goes in the 5th house, unexpected events can be seen related to 5th house. And what is 5th house? It is about creativity, about your expression, about your love. It is about your children. So people who are trying for childbirth can see some movement because sun is what? Atmakaraka, natural Atmakaraka. And fifth house is the natural house of Leo. So definitely this is a favorable house of Surya. But you must also understand that for Capricorn Ascendant, Venus is a very important planet because Venus rules your 5th and 10th house. It is a Raj Yoga planet. And when that planet comes under the effect of Rahu from 23rd of May, this can create insecurities in life. This can make you believe that the best solution for you will be to leave the house, leave the family and move on. Say, if you are in a lot of difficult situation, if you are in a bad relation or you are living in the past, moving on is a good option. But if your current situation is good, but it's just that you don't like it, maybe moving on is a bad answer. It's a bad move. Be very careful with your actions in this time. Overall, if I see, your investments will increase. Your investment will give you more returns. You will see that now all the efforts that you have put into, into different areas of life will start showing results. 
but this can also increase your risk taking appetite because you might feel insecure one more reason being saturn is in second house and on 5th of june it will become retrograde so if i see the combined effect of of different planets with respect to your ascendant on one hand there are insecurities because of saturn on the other hand there is a support of sun because sun aspects your 11th house this means right action will be taken in this transit which will result into financial security security of health and well being improved relations you being more humble and you being more accepting towards different things in life mercury will be retrograde when sun will be entering the taurus zodiac sign buddha is actually a very important planet buddha rules your 6th and 9th house dharma and kartavya duty and your dharma so initially you would want to break free from the duty but you will see that you won't be able to so the best way to handle this transit is by being more humble by being more accepting by being more grounded and therefore you should practice grounding meditation you should walk in the nature you should see the bright sunlight of the morning and you should you should be able to see the good side of the life rather than always focusing on the negativity this is a positive transit this illuminates your 11th house this tells you what you need this tells you where your gains will come from and how should you proceed to get the gains in the future so this is a pathfinder the transit the sun here will be the margdarshak and therefore the light of experienced people that means the knowledge given by them astrology spiritual scriptures will help you a lot in this time also remember that jupiter is in your third house so if your actions are as per dharma if your actions are spiritual if your actions are justified then you will see that your productivity will become become mammoth and you will be able to figure out how to pull yourself out from the rubble and become more and more successful this is a transit of success this is a transit of transformation this is a transit where your laziness goes away and you become more proactive and if you are not proactive then you are going against the nature of planet and therefore you should pull up your socks and keep moving keep working overall if i see that when the dispositor of sun moves into the fourth house there can be some quarrels at home some fight at home or insecurity towards a family member which can drive you to take some really bold and important steps for the next one month so you should take that step because there may not may be no other way but only remember that you should have a fallback plan when you are taking that step be happy about it be accepting and take it with proper caution and therefore you then you will see that there is no turning back no looking back and you will become successful and sun will guide you to the light Aries ascendant sun was in your first house there was a solar eclipse in the sign of aries and now on 15th of may sun is in the sign of taurus for aries it is a very good position it's a very good movement because sun is your fifth lord and fifth house is the navel sign it's, it is a center of gravity of the entire kundli and uh, if fifth house lord is go is in the second house this is a very good sign because this increases the chance of gain of wealth it brings happiness to the family people in your family will be now opening themselves up and you will get to know more about them now it means good or bad both but you will have to accept it second house sun will also meet a second house mercury 
Mercury will be retrograde while Sun makes its move in the sign of Taurus, which means that your appetite to take risk can overcome or override the analytical possibilities of the action. What I want to say is that you know that a certain task that you want to do is not good, but maybe you are taking a chance. Maybe it is a bright future. Maybe it gives a potential of, of growth. It has a potential of growth. But remember one thing. If you are taking a risk, it is because of Rahu and Venus in the first house. On 23rd of May, Venus will come in the first house. And therefore, the possibilities to expand or under the influence of somebody, maybe your spouse, maybe somebody, or circumstantial influence can make you highly insecure. And therefore, you will end up taking a certain action because, because Mercury is moving towards Sun and Mercury is getting combust and it is getting closer and closer and closer. And your Sun is overriding 3rd and 6th house Lord, which is your action and initiatives and which means you might oversee the risk, you might miss the risk and you might not judge things properly and your actions or even your words can go negative. Overeating, over speaking, ignoring health issues is also one of the prime concerns of this sun transit. Not because the sun is bad, but because the relative position of other planets with respect to sun is of that order that is going to override your own mind. And if you are a, say a typical example, if you're, a, if you're an Aries ascendant, an Aries moon sign, this becomes further magnified. Sun, which is the fifth lord when it goes in the second house, it makes a family come together. It brings people closer. It gives you wealth. You have to see whether the risk that you are taking is worth taking it or it is just a chance because if it is just a chance and there is no fallback or backup plan you are in doing a biggest mistake on the other hand this can give you this can process the loan that was stuck from a long time this can clear off the business dues this can give you the opportunity to grow in your business grow in your career and people who want to come back to their family from a foreign land can also see that travel is happening to them. Be careful with what you eat because there is a very high chance that you might end up increasing your weight in this time. Although Jupiter is aspecting 6th house, 4th house and 8th house, when Sun goes in the 2nd house, it shows what you have and what you don't have. So you might be very happy or you might be shocked to realize that the illusion is gone. The consciousness is now closer to the soul. And now you are, you are seeing the amount of wealth you have and the amount of support you have from the family and the near and dear ones. And that can either boost your confidence or depending upon your horoscope can give you a shock. Because it is just light as if you go into a room you might have any expectation that room will be of this or kind or, or that kind. But the moment you switch on the light, there are only two possibilities. Either your expectations will be fulfilled or it will be broken. Be careful of your words and do not try to dominate. Your words may sound authoritarian or egoistic and that can break relations, especially in the marriage and with your in-laws. Anything that has to do with inheritance can be dealt in a very diplomatic way. Be very clear on what you want from life. Be very clear on your message and your words should have the spark of light. Overall, this is a very good transit for Aries Ascendant natives. You must make sure that you're not utilizing the negative illusion that Venus and Rahu in the first house is giving and the insecurities that they are giving because that can inflammate desire that you don't even want. It's like it will create a need that you don't even, don't even require. So for example, 
let's take a very basic example. Say MacBook Air M1 is more than enough for you. And you know that. But this Venus and Rahu can create the insecurity that what if tomorrow an upgrade is needed? What if this happens? And what if it is needed? And that will make you realize that no, I need M1 Pro Max. And instead of $1,000, you will have to shell out $7,000. And now you are suddenly insecure that, wow, there's a $5,000, $6,000 gap. And if you really go on spending that, that money is gone. But only once you buy is when the sun puts its energy on. And if you're not watching that after 5th and 6th of June, you will realize that what did you do? So be careful on that part. Financially, this is a transit where you will have to work on your financial security. You can buy insurances. This is the time when you have to know where you have invested, wh what amount of money you have invested. So sit with your accountant and see to sort the finances. Because on one hand, Saturn is in Aquarius. On the other hand, Sun is in Taurus. Both are your financial houses. And both aspect Scorpio, which is your eighth house, which is actually your investment, your inheritance, your taxation, your insurances. So you need to watch that out. You need to work on that while sun is in the sign of Taurus. Leo Ascendant. Sun moves in your 10th house. It finds a retrograde Mercury there and for Leo, Buddha is a very important planet. Because this is the Lord of 11th and 2nd house and therefore it controls your finances. And both of them comes together in the 10th house. It's more about career, career-related stability, your name, your fame. And this is a very good transit, especially after 3rd of June. Sun and Mercury together forms a Buddha Ditya Yoga in the 10th house, which gives you much needed strength, recognition, a possible promotion, and your efforts will always be recognized and it will come into limelight provided your son is also strong. In the case your son is weak, then you will get what you deserve. The blocks will be removed and you will know which path to move because 10th house, if gets illuminated by the sun, defines the actual path of life. Now, the equation will become different after 23rd of May. Because on 23rd of May, Venus will move out of the sign of exaltation and it will join Rahu in the sign of Aries. Why it is different? Because Venus becomes the dispositor of the Sun, the ruler of Taurus zodiac sign. And Venus for Leo is, is planet of action. It controls your 3rd and 10th house. It controls your initiatives, your courage, your capacity and as well as your reputation, your security, your secured image, your power and position. And that is why Venus should be treated carefully in this time frame. And therefore, your relationship can be, can hurt your image, reputation. So be careful on that angle. You should maintain a cordial relation with your father and being a rebel will not serve the cause. Tenth house is also about the career, your job, the work environment and your livelihood, how you earn the industry in which you work and all this will see good boost and you will see a lot of support. But you will also see some hidden enemies because Taurus will be in Aries and in order to expand, you must not choose the wrong direction because there will be a very high chance that you might try to find a shortcut to the path of success, which obviously you know that there is no shortcut to success. Once Venus goes in the sign of Aries, I will make another video about Venus transit. Venus and Rahu combination is full of Maya and illusion and in the house of Dharma, it can cause a Dharma. This is a Tamsic combination. Yes, when Sun goes in the 10th house, it might happen that in order to save your reputation, you might hide a few things. You might take a wrong path, a path of adharma. But if you take that, 
Saturn is in Aquarius zodiac sign and for this entire month Saturn will be in Aquarius and in fact during the transit of sun in the Taurus Saturn will become retrograde on 5th of June You will have to be ultra cautious because this Saturn aspects your ascendant which is Leo And if sun is in your 10th house Saturn is in the 10th house of Surya that means dharma cannot be avoided does not matter how glorious the path seems like if you choose that path the consequences will be negative on the other hand if i try to see the positive and optimistic side of it it makes you more creative it makes you find out of the box solution smart solution to the problem and you will be appreciated because of this your relationship with your father will improve and the investments that you have made will now start will now give you good results but you will have to take care of your health especially with regards to the food that you eat the thought of hard work the amount of work and responsibilities on your plate can take away your comfort can give you sleepless nights but this is the transit of action so try to do lot of action and activity in this time but ensure that your direction is right ensure the consequences is not negative with respect to marriage and business this is a critical time because your way to of approach your attitude is going to define lot of things and there will be restrictions there will be people going against you there will be problems and there will be lucrative solutions also it's like this is the problem here is the solution but if remember one thing if the solution is coming too easy for you that might not be the solution but actually the problem in disguise because how can the solution become very easy if 10th lord is with rahu in the 9th house and there is a saturn in the 7th house 7th house is what circumstance you can't just see sun transit all by itself you have to see what is what are the other planets doing now you might say that what about jupiter yes jupiter is in the 8th house it is going to protect you it is going to protect your interests but how long if your own karma becomes bad jupiter will also give up if there is a guru to try to save you but another guru says you are a bad child and you don't listen and you don't study and you are following the wrong path even the guru won't save you that is why reaction to circumstances should not be given especially in business and marriage health related improvements will come overall this is a very positive transit just ensure that out of insecurity do not take an impromptu action that can cause long term damage long term side effect that is why the consequences should be focused i'm not saying just focus on the results no focus on the consequence and if i am going to take this action what are going to be the reaction what are the ripples that that my action will create and if that ripple comes back bounces back to me how will i be affected and if you know all this the transit is going to be absolutely okay for you people can also buy home in this time if your horoscope allows if your mahada shantar dasha allows and in case you have a bad sun in your chart if you have rahu ketu or saturn's affliction on sun when sun goes in the 10th house this is the time when you try to correct it every day in the afternoon try to chant aditya hrday stotra do some havan at home and chant gayatri mantra and all these activity will help you a lot try to have a proper communication with your supervisors and try to be as diplomatic as possible sagittarius ascendant sun rules your 9th house and this sun goes in the 6th house you must understand that while your 9th lord is in 6th house on 23rd of may your 6th lord venus will be in the 5th house this might make you feel that you need to overcome the enemies and fight your enemies otherwise 
your life and your productivity will be threatened so be careful on whom you are thinking you who your enemy is this is the time to clear off your dues you will realize the debt burden on you you will realize your responsibility and you will realize the kind of fight you will have to endure in order to survive in this life this can be good this can be bad this can give you relief this can give you a shock you have to accept it because that's your destiny and when sun and mercury is in 6000 if the buddha ditya yoga is being formed in that work smartly and you will see the day you will light of the day and you will see a brilliant solution coming out of this sun and mercury in the 6th house can also give you much needed relief from a disease that you are in in case you are in and sun is called life so prana comes under that zoom domain and when that happens ensure that the destiny will lead you to a path of well being and you will become more healthy and happy after the sun moves to gemini let the sun do its role but remember your enemies are also going to be smarter this is an intellectual war so be careful with what you speak whom you follow what your messages are because if the enemy becomes smarter it will be difficult for you to deal with that although your lagna lord jupiter is in the 4th house and it is protecting your 8th and 12th house and it is actually giving you a lot of buffer but just because you have that buffer if you wage a war then jupiter will not help you jupiter will only help you if you are into defense and not offense this time should be more defensive more protective you are protecting your interests you are trying to secure your life you are trying to get rid of loans you are trying to get rid of negative energy it is more about detoxification inflammation of the gut can be a problem so drink plenty of water keep your gut health uh, good by eating raw food raw vegetables salads healthy diet on 23rd when venus joins rahu in the 5th house this can give you a sense of desire this can create that flame to earn more because now you know that you are in so much of debt you have to pay you have to clear your dues but how will you clear if you won't have money the only problem is that saturn is in your third house and it is going to be retrograde on 5th of june and when saturn goes retrograde you might desperately try to change the way you earn you might desperately try to change the way you you try to secure your life and this desperate attempt can have two outcomes either it will be bullseye or it will be complete waste of time so whatever you do do with lot of thoughts put your put in your thoughts focus there and always have a plan b because without plan b if you just take a, a random step because your venus has inflamed the desire in the 5th house or venus has made you believe that your action will be productive that's a very wrong approach especially if you believe that stock market or share market or you are smart enough to bring money from cryptos and all that areas that might meet a very bad fate because saturn from the third house aspects your fifth house so be careful on that area overall sun transit in the sixth house is more about realization of your duties dharma and if you just follow your dharma and duty and forget what you want control the venus through pranayam and chant aditya hrada stotra and gayatri mantra to bring sun sun's light accept the solar light and accept that when sun goes in 6th house it becomes a healer it becomes a king in war who is fighting for you and you should stand beside that king that means you should stand for yourself and work smartly overall for sagittarius this is going to be a very good transit kark ascendant 
in case of kark ascendant sun rules your second house the sun goes in the 11th house and this creates a very strong dhana yoga when the karka of the wealth goes in the karka of profits now in this case if you see this talks about the wealth generation the income generation with the help of a family member with the help of your words your voice and also with the money that is in your bank account so if you can utilize the funds that you're already that you already have this can convert into a wealth generating factor this also means that your money will also be utilized in helping someone in your network circle and you, if you are a singer if you are a speaker if you are somebody who is associated with voice drama acting you will see that you will see a very positive growth in this time frame the best thing about you is that jupiter has a very strong positive and an uplifting aspect on your lagna and mars will be with this jupiter from 17th of may so mars and jupiter conjunction in the 9th house i will say this is brilliant because mars is your 5th lord as well as 10th lord and it combines with jupiter which is your 9th lord and then in this entire month look out for days when moon is in cancer and moon is in pisces because when this happens the entire trine lord will be in the trine and these 4 or 5 day time period is going to be extremely beneficial for you especially because sun in the 11th house will aspect the 5th house and when that happens it it increases the productivity it makes you more productive so that you can generate more income and it is especially this is good for freelancers this is good for people who are in contract jobs or people who are looking for some a new source of income or who want to bring some more money in their family in their life this is the time when financial trouble will be resolved especially if you are facing any financial trouble with respect to your children for their education for their upbringing you will see that you will be in a much better position now in in fact the initiatives that you will take in this time period in the long run will be very fruitful for your family just that you will have to take care of your diet because if sun is afflicted in your birth chart then health issues related to diet can come up and this can create some trouble or some obstruction when sun is in the sign of taurus it is with mercury and mercury is retrograde till 3rd of june when buddha is vakri you must understand that buddha rules your 12th house and 3rd house that means money can be spent in traveling in vacation and there you might exceed your budget you might exceed your capacity unexpectedly so always keep a financial buffer in case you will have to travel people who want to travel because of their business because of their career will see things moving in the right direction 11th house sun and mercury means you will get help from your network circle and you might also help them in return so if you find somebody who are in need of help be there sometimes your words sometimes your motivation can also do wonders in someone's life overall this is a transit of positivity this is a transit where you will meet enlightened people high profile people this is a transit where productivity will be increased and you must give up lethargy this is the time to act this is the time to work on your money on your finances because the sign of profit the house of profit and gains is now illuminated by your wealth lord so make the best use of it Scorpio ascendant for you the sun rules the 10th house and the sun is in the 7th house once sun moves on 15th of may in the sign of taurus it will encounter budha mercury retrograde till 3rd of june budha is your 8th lord and your 11th lord so definitely this surya which is your karma lord would want you to change the circumstance 
would want you to adapt, improvise and overcome from the situations you are in and what you are going to face and this will transform your source of income, it will transform how you earn or in what, what industry you earn. So expect a major shift in your career provided your horoscope allows that. This is the right time to change career, to change the domain, to change the industry, to start something new, even to start some new business because Mercury and strength is very strong here. Both Sun and Mercury will aspect your first house. So the advice of the spouse or a well-wisher can be really handy in this time. Any struggle in marriage is only going to affect your career in a negative way. So try to keep your personal and professional life separate. Saturn and Mars are in the fourth house. Mars will move in the sign of Taurus. Mars will move in the sign of Pisces on 17th of May. After that, it will be only Saturn in Aquarius who will be aspecting the sign of Leo. So definitely it means that you will have to call a quit to your comfort zone and you will have to work really hard. From 5th of June, Saturn will become retrograde in the 4th house and therefore you would want desperately, you will want to create a comfort zone in your career, but the circumstances may not allow. So be ready for some hard work, be ready for some transformation because transformations don't come and don't happen in the comfort zone. So that is a very obvious thing. But this transit gives you the hope where you will get the light, you will get a new career, you will be able to transform your income and you will be able to earn more provided you are ready to give the hard work. On the other hand, Sun and Mercury in the 7th house can be really beneficial and Saturn can really put you into a situation where you will be able to pull yourself out from the debts, from the clutches of darkness in your career. Jupiter and Venus in the 5th house and then Jupiter and Mars in the 5th house gives you that necessary experience and learning through which you will be able to excel. So if you want to do some certifications, if you want to learn and grow, this is the right time. While Sun is in Taurus, the Venus is going to play a vital role here. Till 23rd of May, Venus will be in the 5th house, exalt and with Jupiter and Mars and therefore it will give you all the positive directions. You can resolve your marital issues in this time. You will be able to figure out what is right and what is wrong and you must be able to communicate properly. Try to build a rapport, try to build a strong personality and try to smile and radiate positive vibrations because that is what will affect the environment and in turn it will come back to you. From 23rd of May, Venus will be in the 6th house with Rahu. This is the time when marital issues can come, so especially after 5th of June, issues in marriage, issues in relationships, issues in business partnerships can be crippled because of the presence of an external force or an external factor. So take in count all those external factor, but don't think about it too much because it can create you know, a lot of doubt in the mind and it can create brain fog. And also one thing, if something is very lucrative, if something is very attractive, understand that it can be a deception, it can be a trouble because Venus and Rahu in the sign of Aries in 6th house can make your enemies play all the tricks in the book. You should be aware that when the 7th Lord is in 6th house and 8th Lord is in 7th house, you should have the necessary protection and you must be very much alert and check the boundaries that is around you. The good thing is that your Ascendant Lord, Mars will be with Jupiter this time. And because of that, you will have absolutely, you will have the absolute power to understand. You will have that cognizance of the, of the surrounding and this will help you steer in the right direction. Sun from the 7th house, although slightly weak, will still aspect your ascendant and you will be able to know your secrets. A guru can help you, a guide can help you in this time and you with this guidance, with this knowledge, personal transformation and professional transformation is bound to happen. Just take care of your health, especially lifestyle related issues can really hit you hard. 
sleeping late in the night can also give you a lot of trouble. Overall, this is a positive and transformative transit, but you should be aware of your enemies and the negativity. So never, never be negative, always be positive. Focus on your roles and be happy. If you have no escape from the surroundings, just enjoy and listen to Bajrang Bar. That will help you a lot. Pisces Ascendant. Sun rules your sixth house and this sun will go in the third house. Not only that, on 17th of May, two days after the sun transit, Mars, which is your second lord, will come on your first house. It will join Jupiter. There will be a Mars, Venus and Jupiter conjunction from 17th of May till 23rd of May on your ascendant. And therefore, it is going to affect the sun transit in a great way. While sun is in the sign of Taurus, the presence of Venus in the first house, the exaltation of Venus, its presence with Mars and Jupiter talks a lot about the way you will think about yourself, the way you will realize your potential. And this is an absolutely brilliant transit because this gives you a great deal of courage, enthusiasm. It gives you the knowledge to fight the odds of life and it also tells you who your enemies are, who your friends are and you will be able to easily segregate the black from the white. This is a transit that gives you an authentic guidance on your potential, on your cap capabilities, on your purusharth. So the real strength is now going to come in your life and this helps you come out of difficult situation. This helps you pull from the troubles, pull yourself from the trouble as well as your family members. Mars transit video I will upload very soon, so please subscribe. Mars and Venus will be together till 23rd and then Venus will go and join Rahu in the second house and there will be a Jupiter-Mars conjunction in the first house. So, so on one hand, Jupiter and Mars is giving you that solid fighter attitude. Rahu and Venus in the second house can warn you about the insecurities. It makes you more creative, more expressive. And your words now reaches beyond what you have thought. Couple of warnings here. You will have to be very careful about your expression. Your expression should never have a superlative touch you should never have that superiority complex because that will irritate Jupiter because Jupiter on your first house wants you to be humble, wants you to be like water. So when Sun goes in the sign of Taurus, while Venus joins Rahu in Aries, while Mars joins Jupiter on the first house, imagine the effort cascades to your ascendant, the third lord, the third house energies cascade back to your ascendant so definitely this means lot to work on yourself and if you start working on your own life, your own self, you will see the light of the day. This is an absolutely brilliant transit for the sun in the sign of Taurus for Pisces ascended and this is even better if you are a Pisces moon sign. You must also understand that this is the time when issues related to family, properties, marriages, even something that is going wrong in your business can be resolved through your willpower and courage. To increase the willpower, practice Abhaya Mudra and chant Hanuman Chalisa and Bajrang Baan every day at least once or twice because that is going to give you that necessary courage. Well, third house is called the house of Parishram, the house of efforts. And third house is also that can lead you to light or darkness. So when sun goes there, it is the actual definition of seeking the light. So you should also seek the light. When sixth lord goes in the third house, this also means that you will have to take care of your family's responsibility, whether you like or not. You might try to find some help and the help may not come so easily. So you might have to do things all by yourself. After all, Mars on the first house 
is definitely going to give you that necessary courage and strength but there will be definitely a war that you will have to fight this is also the time when you can get rid of the debts this is also the time where you can figure out what is the right approach to life the only concern will be a retrograde mercury till 3rd of june because mercury and sun will be in taurus zodiac sign mercury is going to be with this surya for the entire transit of the sun so when mercury is going back and forth oscillating in the sign of taurus this can create insecurities and doubts on your own action but remember doesn't matter what happens jupiter is on your ascendant if you are if you are dealing things with practicality if you have a plan b then things will go right you will be able to excel brilliantly in your career in this time because third house is sixth from the 10th house and this also means that in your career first you try to do your basics first try to strengthen your fundamentals and deliver what you are supposed to and then on top of that you can build your reputation by doing something extra so always try to exceed the expectations overall this is a absolutely brilliant transit it's a transit of hope it's a transit of light and it's a transit of wisdom i hope that surya will give you the necessary energy and power to become bright and successful chant aditya hrda stotra and gayatri mantra and give water to the sun every day wake up early in the morning before sunrise and you will see things changing in your life in a positive direction Gemini ascendant for you sun will be in the 12th house sun rules your third house when sun rules the third house it defines your courage and when the sun goes in the 12th house this means your courage lies in your subconscious brain so this is the time when you connect with your past you connect with the areas that are remote you should try to fulfill the task that has been pending from a very long time because this sun is not that strong This is Sun and Mercury in the twelfth house, aspecting the sixth house. Therefore, you need to be very much proactive towards towards your losses. You should mitigate risk in your life. And because Ketu is fifth from your ascendant, and if you are a Gemini Moon sign, Ketu is fifth from your Moon sign, you should be very much careful about your expectations. Yes. initially you will also see that your losses are converting into gains but that is because of your strategic planning that is because of your will to create a change that is because of your own strength and ability and the presence of jupiter in the 10th house this is a good time for people who want to apply to a foreign country in career who want to move to a different city who want to plan a career in export and import travel who want to be a doctor medical student who want to pursue career in pharmaceutical industry ayurveda wellness healing nursing you will see that you will see great boost but people who are in finances banking may see decline because of your ascendant lord being retrograde so you need to wait till mercury becomes direct so you need to wait till at least 5th of june after that things will become slowly much better so the first 20 days of the sun transit can be can give you mixed result but then slowly things will become better because the next journey of buddh will be towards your ascendant so slowly you will gain powers and after that sun will also enter your ascendant and things will become much better then overall if i see this is a transit that will give you mixed result you need to pray gayatri mantra and aditya hrda stotra and try to reduce your losses don't take any loan in this time because that can be dangerous investment into risky areas can also result into financial losses so be careful if you get any dream do not ignore that write it down and try to give it a thought because dreams will be ways to communicate third house is communication 12th house is the house of dreams you will be getting lot of communication through subconscious brain silent messages numbers patterns you need to be watchful of all these active all these things happening around you overall this is a transit that will give you 
new ideas. This is a thought provoking transit, which you can capitalize later on. So be alert, be attentive and be intuitive. Libra Ascendant. In case of Libra Ascendant, Sun will make its move in your 8th house. Sun rules your 11th house and therefore it rules your expectations, wishes. It defines your network circle. When Sun goes in the 8th house, this is more about transformation. And because your Ascendant and your 8th house is controlled by Venus, definitely the Sun transit will affect your Ascendant indirectly and it will have a very profound impact and this will call for major changes so if you want to step up if you want to bring changes in your life this is the time when sun moves in the sign of taurus you have a moon ketu formation in the first house so definitely the initial week will be a week where your your thoughts will be clogged or there is a retrograde mercury in the 8th house so you will be confused about the possibilities of the future. There will be multiple options right in front of you. So it is always good to do a lot of research before you take a call, take a decision. Now because your ascendant and 8th house is controlled by Venus, Venus transit will be extremely important. Now the real play begins after 23rd of May. Because Venus will move in the sign of Aries and it will join with Rahu. I will make exclusive Venus transit video for your ascendant. Please subscribe. But when Venus moves with Rahu, understand what happens with the sun. You get more and more confused about your source of income, about your expectations. And you will see that a lot of things will change. Possibly you will mimic, imitate the surrounding or you will try to follow somebody or you will, you will have a leader, a power figure where which, which inspires you, which influences you and you would want to reach to that position. This can create identity crisis. This can create problems in source of income. What may happen is that because of some lucrative offer, a possible bright future or a possibility can lure your finances and you can invest in places where you should not have. That is why financial investment till Mercury is retrograde, that is till 3rd of June, is not advised. This is a transit where transformations will come, but you must always try to figure out, understand why this transformation is happening in your life in the first place. Is it because of the influence of a positive figure? Then this transformation is good. But if you are trying to change something because you are unhappy with your life, because you are comparing yourself with somebody, then that comparison is only going to put you in trouble. Mars on 17th of May will move in the zodiac of Pisces and Pisces is your 6th house. A Jupiter and Mars conjunction in 6th house can represent your ability to understand the duties and responsibilities of the life. And therefore, your action is needed towards that. So on one hand, you will have duties and responsibilities, debts, loans, something to take care, some war to fight. And on the other hand, there will be a lucrative surrounding, lucrative future. And this is the war between reality and illusion. So whatever you want to decide, decide after 5th of June. Overall, this is a transit where you will gain few friends, you will lose few friends. Your money may be invested to secure your future, which is absolutely all right. But you need to watch out for actions that are taken with future into consideration. Because you must always check the feasibility of the, of the action, consequences of what you are going to do. Say, for example, you think investing in a home is a good idea but maybe in the long run, it will not be. So you will have to check your own horoscope and don't try to do anything that is not allowed by your horoscope in this time frame. Otherwise, this is a very good transit. Whenever sun moves into the 8th house, remember, this is the time when 
the dead comes alive. So there are two things. If you feel dead inside, you will come alive. If you feel trapped, if you feel suffocated, you will come alive. The sun will give you the fresh breath of air and will make all the dark and hidden things illuminated. So you will get to know the secrets about you, about your family, about your friends. How you face them, how you deal with them is a different thing. You will have to deal with them with proper understanding. Because remember, Ketu being on your first house, your ascendant will be affected by this Ketu. Try to take the side of the light and you will see that you will become happy and successful. This is the time of a change, change for good. Aquarius Ascendant Sun rules your 7th house and Sun will move in the 4th house. So it's a very, very good transit for you. Your Ascendant already have Saturn and Mars directly aspecting the 7th house, the sign of Leo. So while Sun moves in the 4th house, this means your attempt will be to bring comfort in your life. You would try to be more productive. This will correct your sleep. This will correct your resting pattern and will fill you with positive energy and vibration which will eventually result in how you do your karma, how you approach in your job. And this will also be a positive transit that will bring peace and happiness in your home. Is it a good time to buy a property? Yes. Assets can be created in this time, but be careful because of the retrograde mercury. Markets will be volatile this time. So whatever you want to do, do a lot of planning, and do it after, after 23rd of May because on 17th of May, Mars which is on your first house will be free. It will move into Pisces. It will be along with Jupiter. I will make a Mars and Venus transit video separately. Please subscribe so that you get the notification. After 5th of June, Saturn will be retrograde. So after that, you might roll back a few decisions that you take, especially related to your home, personal space, assets, and also on the career of your spouse. So there can be some conflict and contradiction between your career and your spouse's career if you are married, or how the circumstances is presented in front of you that can be slightly challenging in this time. Because on one hand, Saturn has a 10th aspect on 10th house, 7th aspect on Leo, Sun being in the Taurus zodiac sign also aspects Scorpio, which is basically your 10th house. So definitely, it is a challenging time. The best thing to do right now when Sun will be in the Taurus zodiac sign is trying to secure your assets. Look out your budget and only work within that structure, within that frame. Do not go beyond your capacity because that can hurt your interests in the long run. Venus, which is the fourth lord, as well as the ninth lord, will be with Rahu in the third house. So there definitely it will tell you about lucrative ideas. It will improve your communication, but it can also make you take certain decisions that will be based on comparison and illusion rather than reality. So be careful on that angle. But on the other hand, it will make you more creative. It will make you think smartly and it will make you take certain decisions that can literally change your fate. And this can be really, really good for you. So it's like you have to strike a balance. On one hand, you respect the energies that are trying to create a change, which is Venus and Rahu. On the other hand, you're also maintaining and respecting the restrictions of Saturn and the strategy of Mars and Jupiter. So a well-planned approach in this, in this time will make you wealthy, will make you wise, and will also fulfill your desires. For Aquarius Ascendant and Aquarius Moon sign, this is a transit of Samudra Manthan. You will get both positive and negative out of this. But remember, you must reject the negative and accept the positive. You must chant the Hare Rama Hare Krishna Maha Mantra every day in this time and also pray to Lord Shiva. 
chanting Aditya Hrida Stotra is going to be extremely beneficial. You will also see that you will be very active at night. So any idea that you receive just before you sleep should be noted down, but try to reduce your brain activity. So use less of mobile phones before you sleep. Overall, this can literally tell you how to compromise, when to compromise, where to compromise, where your happiness lies and the amount of adjustment needed. So it's a more about a transit that will bring more and more compatibility where you will become more and more compatible with your circumstance, with your life and with events, which puts you in a better spot for growth and for harmony. Just beware because marriage can take the most impact in this time in case there is a conflict. In case you are too, too hyper, too aggressive, then this will definitely hurt marriage because of Rahu and Venus conjunction in the third house and Sa Sun aspecting Scorpio, Saturn aspecting Leo. So this is a cross energy that is trying to wage a war in your Kendra Bhava and Ketu in Libra in the ninth can also create certain issues in marriage. So marriage is one area where you will have to be protected and defensive. And if you are unmarried, if you are just a student, all you have to do is you will have to adjust with the surrounding, the circumstance. Sometimes it may be not so favorable. But overall, if I see, if I see in a complete picture, it's a very good transit for you.